This week on the Stogie Geek Show, we get a very special interview with Jorge Padron of Padron Cigars. Uh, we've got a couple of uh, special guest co-hosts, one in studio here in Rhode Island and one in our remote studio in North Carolina, so stay tuned for that. Our debonair ideal topic is going to be a lot of fun, a meeting with Donald Trump. Now, Donald Trump has had lots of meetings, but we're going to talk about it as specific as to the cigar industry. And, of course, we're going to review our Stogies of the Week, all that and more. Stay tuned for this edition of the Stogie Geek Show. This is a Security Weekly production. Broadcasting live from G-Unit Studios in Rhode Island, it's the show where cigars burn slow, ashes fall fast, and cocktails flow steady. It's the Stogie Geek Show. to you by M. Bombay Cigars represent the most admired cigar culture of Cuba. They select the best of the best quality tobacco to use in the aging process. M. Bombay Cigars are then rolled in Costa Rica by some of the most experienced cigar rollers, giving it a unique smoking experience. The band portrays a detailed and artistic nature of our small industry. Try the M. Bombay Casera, the M. Bombay Mora, and the recently released M. Bombay Habano. M. Bombay Cigars, where the cigar is a way of life. And by Punch Cigars. For more information, check them out at www.punchcigars.com. Welcome, everyone, to the Stogie Geek Show. This is episode 215. It's our first episode of 2017. Happy New Year, everyone. I'm, of course, your host, Paul Asadorian, broadcasting live from the Villiger North American Studios. Here with me in this studio, to my right, is Joe Hosempa. Joe, welcome to the show. Did I say that right? Hosempa, yes. Hosempa, I got it. Okay. Thank you for having me. How are you? I'm really bad pronouncing people's names. So. We'll get to it. Yeah. <laughs> I had to really think about yours for a while and hear you say it a couple times before I was confident that I'd get it right on the show. Hosempa, so. you got it. Awesome. Uh, happy New Year. Yes, Happy New Year to uh, to you and all of our listeners. Um, Joe is uh, a, a staple here uh, next door at the Havana Cigar Club and lots of different cigar events and places here in Rhode Island. Uh, he used to work for a, a cigar lounge uh, mm-hmm. in a very historic kind of place in Providence on Wicked and Street, for those that are familiar with Rhode Island. And you've uh, you had your own cigar radio show. You still do cigar radio stuff. So I was like, hey, why don't you come help us out and, and sit in for Stogie Geeks? I'm looking so, forward to it. It's yeah, going to be a great year. It's definitely going to be a great year. And don't remind me to talk about your humidor. Maybe not on this show, but on a different show. Okay. Yeah. This really, really cool vintage humidor that Joe has. On the lines via Skype, we've got, of course, Mr. Will Cooper. Welcome, Will. Hey, Paul. Happy New Year. Happy New Year. Um, your Giants are, aren't doing too good, huh? I saw a lot of posts about football uh, over the, the holiday break. So, Well, we made the playoffs with a, with a coach who basically uh, is incompetent. Okay? And so it's got to say something for the level of talent for the team. That's true. No, it's a good point. Uh, um, and, and the coach is incompetent. Um, I'll just kind of leave, as folks know, but... Uh, Hey, we, we got to the playoffs, um, and I don't think we're going to have another run like we, we've had. So I don't think you guys have to worry about facing us down the road. Yeah, because we have bad luck playing, playing the Giants. So. You know, that's the one. Let me tell you. Look, okay, that's the one thing you guys do need to do. That's true. The, you, if Belichick, well, he doesn't. You know, if Belichick beats the Giants, I mean, if Belichick's got a storied career. So he beats the Giants. He's, uh, you know. That's even another notch on him. <clears throat> Absolutely. Stace is here with us. Stace Berkman, welcome to the show. Good to see you, Paul. How are you guys doing? Joe, how you doing, buddy? I'm doing well. How are you? How- Joe, Joe, yeah, Joe, you and I actually have met once. We, yeah, we you met, did. We, 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 met, we, we had a cigar, I think, back in May. No kidding. Yeah, next we were door. over. Over at the Havana door. Club. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah we, we did. Yeah, we did. Well. Because Paul mentioned you, and I said, yep, I remember him. We, we did talk as soon as he mentioned your background. Yeah, I'm sort of a cigar gypsy here in Rhode Island, for sure. <laughs> you know? Joe, where, Joe, where are you from originally? I grew up in Warren, Rhode Island. Uh, okay. So I'm a native of Rhode Island. Uh, I used to own a cigar shop in Providence, Rhode Island, uh, way back in the early 2000s. And I own a business. in uh, it was on in East Greenwich. Now I'm over back in Bristol, over on the East Bay. So I have a, awesome. a business there, too. So, yeah. 
Awesome, awesome, awesome. I'm a uh, New Yorker now living in North Carolina. Yeah, North Car- I'm going to have to come visit you uh, and do a co-host from down there because especially in the wintertime, I heard it doesn't get above uh, like four, doesn't get like below 40, like 40, so I yeah, can still yeah, golf because I haven't good. golfed in four weeks. So It's a golf paradise down yeah. there, too. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. Well, 12 months of golf and you guys come down, smoke cigars, swing <laughs> some clubs. Mm-hmm. We'll have fun. I'm in. <laughs> it's awesome. Uh, so, well, a lot's been uh, been happening. We took some time off, and uh, we're ready to get into our Stogies of the Week. Um, did we uh, talk about uh, the Cigar Aficionado list? Or I'm sure we're going to be talking about that tonight in, in several episodes. I thought it was an interesting list this year. Um, I released my list, and now, Will, you're still working on your, your list. Is that true? It will be, yeah, the finals coming out on actually January 17th this year. Okay. Uh, so we're going to have a lot of suspense in there. But I will tell you that of the 25 cigars on the Scar Aficionado list, none made my list. Yeah, perfect. Uh, uh, but that's not a knock. They have different criteria. Um, theirs is more, and we've talked about it a few times, it's more of a tournament. It's more of a tasting tournament they have. So, And they, I think they have some things that they do, you know, that are cool, like, you know, being able to factor in years and vintages and things like that. So, so I'm not knocking it. It's just different. <clears throat> no, I, I, I agree. Certainly. All right. So, Will, why don't you kick us off uh, with the first cigar review for the year? Well, you know, it's interesting, but I actually smoked today, Paul, actually this weekend. It's, we've heard of um, the smoke-in shop exclusives. Yes. They've had a, a good run of shop exclusives over the, the, the past several years. They have, and when I was down in Florida back in, I'd say, August, I picked up a cigar that I think actually smoked in when Abe was on the show. He actually broke the news, and that's his Davidoff Smoke Exclusive, the 20th anniversary cigar. And um, that was released, I think, mid-year. Mm-hmm. It's a beautiful Bellicoso, Paul. It's got the Davidoff white label on it, and it's got a secondary band that says um, Smoke In 20th Anniversary on it. It's a little more pricier than some of the other smoke-in exclusives as part of that micro-blend series. Mm-hmm. It goes for about 20 bucks. Um, but it's it's a really, if you're, here's the thing. If you're a Davidoff fan, I think you're going to like this cigar. If you're a fan who's been used to, I think, some of the edgy boutiques that Abe has got in that series, this is going to be a little more different. It's a little more of a refined type of smoke. But it's got a lot of those Davidesque, Davidoff-esque qualities to it. It's got a nice sweetness to it, uh, just a, a subtle sweetness, almost like a little bit of a burnt cherry note. It's got some of the classic Davidoff uh, black pepper. Um, I should also mention that this cigar is a Bellicoso. It's a 6x52 Bellicoso. I sort of smoke beautiful in the Bellicoso. Uh, overall, a solid cigar. It's a $20 cigar, so I probably would put it no higher than a fiver, but definitely something, um, if, you're, like I said, if you're a Davidoff fan, check out that one. It's, it's, a, it's a nice release. Nice. I haven't smoked that one yet, but hopefully I get my hands on it. I'm going down there at the end of the month, so I'm, I'm going to pick up some more of them for you. I want him to try it, too. You guys to try it. So Awesome. Um, I went, uh, speaking of kind of like high-end kind of stuff uh, in Dominican, um, Arturo Fuente had some releases. Now, I don't know. I, I follow the Fuente releases, you know, as they hit the stores. Usually around the holiday time is a big time for stores to get uh, releases from, from Fuente, specifically Opus X, and usually Añejo is in there. So I am now actually smoking uh, this year's Añejo Shark, um, which is, this is a really good year for the shark size. Well, I know in a, in a couple of years past, I don't think they've been as good as three, four years ago, um, but this year's release is really good. I think they got back to, uh, I don't know. I, I hate to say there's inconsistencies, but I've smoked enough Anejo <laughs> and enough Anejo Sharks to know that some years are better than others. This is a good year. I don't know if you, have you smoked this year's Will or States? Yep. Sure yep. enough. In fact, I'm getting ready to review the 50. <laughs> mm. Yeah. In, in fact, Paul, great point, because one of the things I've been, I've been having discussions with people on, on factory of the year. And no one's talking about Arturo Fuente and the year that they've had and, and what I've seen come out this year. They haven't had that stellar new brand. That's, it may be the 20th anniversary cigar, but, but yeah. in general, the stuff, and, and I, I think the Anier was a great, great testament to that. Absolutely. So I did smoke the uh, Opus X 20th uh, anniversary in the Robusto size. Um, and the only information I really had about this was uh, that Steve Saka had smoked it and put some very 
light comments in about, you know, that it isn't as heavy or as strong as some of the other releases. Um, really didn't add much other than that. So that's really all I knew going into it. I know that the packaging is absolutely stunning. That Opus X band that has the blue in it mm. is yep. just what they did. I actually held it up to a regular Opus X and the way they interchange, all they did was just change the red colors to blue colors. And it's just amazing. And the boxes are blue. It's just gorgeous. It looks Paul, stunning. It yeah, looks fantastic. Paul, so you ended up getting them, right? I did. It turns out that uh, one of our favorite retailers in the world, Mr. J's Havana Smoke Shop, uh, had some set aside for me uh, okay. and, and called me up. And, and I did go back. I don't know what the retail price was. Like, what's the yeah. retail price for a booster? It was like $21.95? 20, 20, yeah, tw- $20. Yeah. 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 Gotcha. Cause, uh, it, yeah. Because what happened, Paul, is so Paul asked me after the last show we did, hey, did you get some? And I said, yes. Yeah, Stogie Santa sent me one, right? So I called up Stogie Santa and I said, you know, hey, do you have any for Paul? And he said, oh, yeah, yeah, I have some for him. He goes, by the way, I sent you more than one. I said, you did. He sent me one of each size. So I, I actually hadn't even opened the box that he gave me. Oh, uh, okay. So, so I have one Good. of each size and I was like, ah, oh, Paul's probably thinking, yeah, I was probably going to hoard him. No, but I'm glad <laughs> you were able to get him. Yeah, yeah no. So, yeah. yeah, I actually, uh, I think I, I might have gotten two of each size uh, in there. No, he, he held you two. He held yeah. you two. So I got two Go of ahead. each size. So I started yep. with the Robusto. And I have to tell you, I was talking to Big Pete, and I say, because Big Pete was asking me, he's like, well, what'd you think of it? I said, well, when I lit it up, I'm like, that first third had this unmistakable vanilla note. And I'm not big on talking about a lot of different flavors and nuances you get in the cigars. I kind of stick to, you know, salty, sweet, uh, spicy, those kind of things, very generic categories. I'll put flavors in categories of, you know, coffee and chocolate and maybe caramel and, and vanilla or whatever. But this was like vanilla. I mean, very, very sweet, very uh, much a vanilla note that came from this cigar. Uh, that persisted through the first half of the cigar. The second half, that vanilla note went away, and it was kind of, I don't know, I was a little disappointed in the second half of the cigar. Uh, I thought it was a little harsh. I thought it could have uh, probably aged some more. My concern is I don't want it to age out that vanilla characteristic uh, in you know, hopes of improving the second half. So I'm kind of confused as to when I'll smoke the other Robusto because I don't want to lose that vanilla note because it was awesome. You might want to do it half. soon, you know, within three months, I think. Because it is very light. It yeah, is a good it, point, it, Joe. It is. And then also... Uh, have you smoked the 20th anniversary yet? Not this. No. No, okay. I have not. But I, um, I thought it was lighter, yeah. Mm. I thought it was the, peop- the people that uh, I've talked to, I haven't smoked it either. I'm holding it. I'm going to wait uh, just for a little bit. But the people that I've talked to, they, they, they've they aligned it like Angel Share. They said it's very, very mild. M- yes. Much milder than the regular Opus. They get angel share uh, type palette uh, flavors off of it. I haven't smoked it, so I'm not going to comment, but that's some of the stuff that I'm hearing here in Charlotte. Yeah. Yeah, other people describe that cinnamon note that you get from a lot of these special Fuente blends. I found it more uh, vanilla than cinnamon. Um, But I I would call this one a, a box. What did I say? Box split on this one, I think. Because that first third, uh, first half rather, was just so good. Yeah, this is a box split, uh, in my opinion. It's a pretty hefty price tag. I think there's, when you get into that twenty dollar price tag, I don't know. There's certainly a cigar that I've smoked recently that just blew me away at that twenty dollar price tag, um, which was that um, the ninetieth anniversary Padron in the natural wrapper mm. for eighteen or nineteen dollars, depending if you buy a box and get a slight discount. It's in that twenty dollar range. Um, that to me is the best special edition that's come out in that twenty dollars price range in a long time. Um, so this is a box split for me. Paul, I agreed with you though. There was something in the second half. It got a string. It was like an astringent taste. Mm. And why I didn't review it is I kind of just said it. I think it needs some time. Yeah. Uh, now, yeah. Now you're right. The point I didn't. And I spoke the same size, the robusto. I would hope. I hope that note doesn't age out of it because, it, like I said, this thing starts out like like gangbusters. How good it is! Oh yeah, yeah. So back to you, Will Stace. Uh, yeah. So uh, this time of year, I'm always smoking top shelf stuff. It's the holidays, right? So um, what I did was I reached into my humidor. I had a couple of the Fuentes uh, and Yeho Reservas. I had a couple of the Fifties, a couple of the Sharks. I decided not to grab the Shark. I grabbed a Fifty Paul um, mm-hmm. and uh, pulled it out and. Um, You know, I just, I love Añejos and I like smoking them when they come in, but I also like holding a couple. And 
I don't know about your humidor, but my humidor, my añejos that have got three, four, or five years age on them, uh, they, they get a little firmer, uh, a little little harder on the outside. But you just take a sliver off the back, and it's an effortless draw. Wonderful, wonderful flavor. Uh, I, I don't know uh, how much the viewers are up to snuff on Fuente uh, with regard to the añejo, but you know the, the añejo came about right because of hurricanes and bad weather. Uh, decimated uh, the crop that was used for the uh, Opus X uh, wrapper, right? So uh, rather than sitting there saying we're not going to do any Opus, you know, Fuente gets gets creative, right? He grabs this five-year age Connecticut broadleaf wrapper that he's got aging in oak cognac barrels, and he says we're putting out an Opus, and he calls it an añejo. And I don't know, I don't know if they came out in 2000 or 2001. I'd have to check, but. You know, they hit a home run with that, and and just the, the creativity that they have to to build something that has stood the test of time. I just I'm I'm really passionate about the añejos. I love smoking them, especially during the holiday season. And when I grabbed the 2012 out of my humidor, uh, it was it was excellent. Um, yeah, it dialed back a little bit, but I, the way I like to characterize añejos is they're bold, but they're smooth and elegant, right? So they've got they've got body to them. Um, I think the cognac just adds a nice sweetness and richness to it on the on top of the CBL wrapper. Um, but it, it's it, it's distinctive. It's got nice flavors. Um, it's complex. And uh, the fifty, the five and a quarter by fifty robusto, did me really well. Now, see, see, so I'm going to uh, disagree in terms of my palate. I don't like the añejo, specifically in the number fifty, to be aged. I find it loses some of those flavor characteristics for me. And yep. I want to smoke them right out of the box. So I actually bought five that just came in uh, in this season, and I smoked one the other day. And I was like, "Wow, this is how I like to smoke this cigar." I find when they age, like they just they lose the characteristics that I like and I identify with, and I'm like, "Yeah, it's kind of it's okay." Here, but, the weather starts to get colder. Here, yes, up north, and and uh, the añejo always reminds me of you know the right Christmas is coming or it's holiday season. Yeah, you season's smoke. You coming. tend to smoke. Yeah, the, yeah, yeah, you know, exactly. and then, you know, I'm I'm in a sweater. Mm-hmm. You know, I'm in a sweater and jeans, and it's cold, and and, and I'm smoking know, añejo, and yeah. I'm smoking, and and, and uh, they never last past Valentine's Day for me either. Yeah, you know, mm. I I just enjoy them, and then and then you know, as as the calendar progresses. Maybe I get into some some different stuff, and that's one of the things I like about cigar companies that produce something that's yearly calendar. You know, I know you associate Quesada, it with that time. Of I year. know Quesada yes. does that with the Oktoberfest mm-hmm. every year, and I agree. Sometimes yep. some some years have been better with 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 that, uh, and and I guess it's just the way the the, the crop goes. So sometimes you smoke them, they're mm-hmm. really really strong, and other times like eh, last year's was better, or or right. this is way better than last year's. You know, to me it's kind of like a calendar reset. Set, you know, I, when I smoke cigars, I like to to kind of be in the moment anyway. So, mm. uh, like I said, the, they, uh, I guess I'm with you. They won't. I won't keep them in my humidor, and they yeah. won't last. Well, I know Mark Jr. had some really aged number fifties in his humidor, uh, and we're talking about doing a trade, and I, he gave me one to try, and I'm like, dude, I like it. I think it's a good cigar, but like, I wouldn't. I'm not gonna go like halves on the box with you or get, or buy the box. He had like two boxes of aged mm. number fifties, and I'm like, yeah, I'm kind of I'm all set. It dude. just doesn't excite you. No, it doesn't excite yeah. me. Yeah, so some people uh, like to keep them and try them, and you know. and I do. And I mean, I age my Opus. I in the Shark, I like. I I mean, to kind of contrast that, Stace, I do like the Sharks. I think the Sharks out of the box are a little lighter, but for whatever reason. I don't find they lose that much with age either. So I like to smoke the shark size when they're fresh, coming right off the shelf in December. And, you know, three years down the road, I still get a great smoking experience out of that shark size. And, I mean, that's just me in, in, in my palate uh, and that's the size that I like. And that's a great thing about cigars, right? Because I'm not a torpedo guy. The box press uh, shark is a great stick to look at. Smoke-wise, I'll take the the 48, the 50, and the 888 over the shark. Boy, the 888, that's one that I smoked right right off the truck. Yeah, oh, yeah I never had an Añejo that yeah. I could smoke right off the truck with that 888. Yeah. yeah. <clears throat> All right. So, Will, what do you got? Um, I got this is a really interesting cigar. So we had we had Fred Rui on the show a few weeks ago, and uh, Fred actually we talked about his Candela. Uh, mm. And the, the Candela is called the GB19, which uh, is in honor of his Green Bay Packers. And it's a Candela. So we're playing your Giants. They're playing my Giants. They're hosting your Giants. They're hosting. They're going to beat our Giants. Mm-hmm. But uh, 
<laughs> but, you know, I, I didn't know that at the time. I just uh, wanted to smoke this Candela. And the GB, the 19 actually is the year the, pa- the Packers came into the league. Um, mm. This, Paul, this Candela is like no other. I, I know I've said this about a couple of Candelas this year. This Candela was like no other Candela I had. And I'm not talking flavor-wise, because flavor-wise, it was very traditional. You get the grassy notes in there. You know, you're going to get some of those herbal notes. This is a little bit of spice. This thing was a nicotine bomb. Mm. Mm. I, lo- I love was, Candela, right? I love This it. was the strongest <laughs> Candela, nicotine-wise, really? I ever had. Really? And did did was, he use uh, Nicaraguan uh, tobacco inside of it? Yeah. He's using Nic- yep. He's, it's all Nicaraguan in the filler. Yeah. I mean, what I'm saying, this thing was like close to full strength. I, I'm not kidding. And I went and smoked another one at another time of the day to be to kind of just say maybe it was because I had the first one in the morning. Maybe it was just me. No, this thing is strong. And then I've talked to some other people that are saying this thing breaks some of the molds of, of what you would say strength wise can do. Hmm. Now, body wise, it's kind of in that mild to medium to medium. So the flavors aren't very heavy on the palate. But that's it's got a nicotine. Rub. It's got a nicotine, rub, and I don't know if it's going to age out or not. I I liked it a lot, and I liked the fact it brought that punch. I mean, it's somewhere between a fiver and a box split right now. The question I have is, in a year, is that thing going to still hold its punch? Because then it's going to become a little more ordinary. Mm. Yeah, but that Nicaraguan tobacco might age pretty nicely. Will I, I like the Candela paired with <clears throat> the uh, Nicaraguan tobacco fillers? Mm-hmm. Yep. As opposed to Dominican, I just think it's yep. a much better pairing. I think it offsets the. It's kind of like when you're cooking something really salty and uh, you add sugar to it, like a you know a gravy as we call it here in Rhode Island, sure. right? Yeah, you add yeah sugar right. to it, right? I feel like it's that same kind of. You got a really herbally wrapper, but you're pairing that with a nice gritty Nicaraguan filler that's giving you you know a lot of a uh, little bit of earth and some things to offset that herbal. When you do a Dominican, I think with the candela. For me, they're kind of too close, and if you like that, that's fine. But I, I like the contra. I like the Illusione uh, 888 Candela. I thought that was a great uh, blend. Yeah. Fomorian, Fomorian. Uh, yeah, Skips is really th- good. Th- as well. This was even stronger Skips is than good Fomorian. too. Yep. Yeah, I mean, Paul. When I when I when I smoked this, the first thing I said is, "This is like Paul's," because I know you like a more traditional Candela, and I yeah. know you like the Nicaragua. But I just, again, I was surprised at the pop that this thing was having on nice. you off a of Candela. I just never expected. I do. It. I like that herbal grassy flavor. That like when I smoke a Candela, I want that like herbal. I like the contrast. I I, I like it yeah. when it's when it, when it, when it contrasts for yeah, sure. Absolutely. Yeah. 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 So I, um, I, I find it a little boring. It's, yeah, it's I, just, I, I agree. No, it's good. It's right. good. It's constructed, sure, but it, I just find it. I want something. It's tricky. I think it's tricky to blend, and I think that I like that Will can say, you know, I say this about a lot of Candelas and smoking lately, but this is like no other Candela, sure. which tells me the blenders are really experimenting and bringing to market uh, these different Candela blends, which I think is, is nice that we have these options to, to smoke all these different things because it's really cool smoking a green cigar. Yeah, a couple yeah. years it, ago. Well, and it's, only a, had like it's a throwback choices. to the 50s, right? Yeah, exactly. yeah. yeah. The, 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 all the cigars back in the day used to be green, right? Right. Yep. Um, I smoked a vintage cigar, and I just I happened to come across this in a local shop. Uh, Joe, you probably you know this, this is from the Humidor. Did yeah. you see these in the Humidor? Yeah. yeah. What is it? This I'm, is um, a Partagas eighteen forty five limited reserve. Yeah. It's like old, probably fifteen oh. years old or more. Uh, I haven't done a lot of research on exactly which release this was from Partagas. The the band and everything, and even the color of the wrapper kind of reminded me of the one that used to come in those glass tubes. Uh, with a little, like, uh, had like a little dongle on it in a glass tube. I don't remember what those were, but it very much reminded me of that. It may very well be a Cameroon uh, wrapped. It smoked like a Cameroon uh, wrapped cigar. Uh, but these were retailing for like $25 a piece. So, you know, I bought two to, to, to have and review on the show. Uh, it's kind of a cool thing that the humidor, they've been around forever. They've got all this vintage stuff that they bring out. Yeah, kind she, of has piecemeal. A, she has a box within her humidor. The boxes within boxes. You, know, you, you gotta know. bang twice to get the secret password. And if the door flips open. <laughs> and then, yeah, For they, sure. they got a lot of that going on there. Yeah, but they does. do they do bring them out. Um, and uh, so this was a nice surprise to see. Uh, very good cigar. Still had a lot of flavor to it. Had mm-hmm. a nice wood flavor to it. Um, you know, a sweet tobacco kind of flavor, as you find with cigars that are 15 or 20 years old. Uh, I tend to get that more traditional tobacco flavor. Mm-hmm. Um, I think it's because blenders didn't have as much variety and all of the different uh, seed varietals and leaf varietals that they have today. Mm. So I think older cigars that I tend to smoke, I'm like, yeah, that kind of has that, like, that's what blenders were working with back in the day. Right. 
is right. is a uh, smaller subset, I think, of uh, different strains of plants and leaves, uh, tobacco uh, plants to play with. So uh, this was a great cigar. I would call this, what did I call this? Uh, a box split, certainly. I like smoking them. It didn't, a lot of people think, you know, you smoke vintage. Like, it's absolutely going to be an Oasis rating on the Stoey Geeks. It's going to be Jump for Joy. Oh, my God, it's the best cigar I ever had. This, for me, was a box split. Like, I would keep a couple, you know, in my humidor and, and, and smoke them. So, uh, Will or Stace, do you guys remember this cigar or um, you know, want to comment on it? I think it is Cameroon. I don't know. I could be wrong, but. I remember the cigar. I don't remember the wrapper. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. It's a good cigar. You know, we talked about, we, we did a few things on vintage cigars last year, Paul, mm-hmm. and we talked about vintage cigars do kind of jump the shark at some point where they kind of age, they, they peak, and then they kind of start to go on the downswing, and I think that's a natural thing. Right. I this mean, one wasn't aged out by any stretch either. No, like it I wasn't was, aged I was, out. Yeah, I was surprised, actually. But would you say it was reaching? It had it probably already passed its peak. You'd say. Oh right? yeah, I would definitely say that's true. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I remember. Like, remember when we were down in Florida, states, and we got those um, those claros, those uh, the uh, Cuban, the, the Cuban. Cuban. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We, yeah. yeah it was kind of like that. that. It was yeah. Where well, those were way past their peak. Way past their peak. Yeah. <laughs> we should have just saved those. Saved those. <laughs> blew away through. <laughs> Mm-hmm. That happened, yeah. And then Cigar yeah. Aficionado does that uh, vintage cigar section in there, too. And you can I tell by reading it. some of the reviews, like, it's kind of mixed, you know? Yep. <laughs> so, uh, Joe, what have you uh, have you smoked anything recently that kind of sticks out in your mind? Recently, um, like I said, I've I've been all over those Añejos. Yeah, you know, that's I've good. I've been all over those. Um, the, uh, I'm going to, it's... The second cigar release from the Sobre Mesa. So the Mi Querida. Mi Querida. Yes. Yes. It's like a mistress or something like that. Is that? I'm yep, Italian. Yeah, it. yeah. So it's like Dirty a little mistress yeah, on the side. It's like a, it's like a uh, here up north, I guess they're called Kumaras. But, you know. <laughs> that's anyway. what they call them in the, so- <laughs> in the Sopranos. That's what they call it. Yeah. You know, yeah. Uh, anyway, but yeah, you know, I, I've been on that. You know, that was my that. number one cigar of the year was that in the yeah. Anco Largo size. Yeah, I had the Larora. And the red, the, the Maduro Laura in the tube. Aurora. Uh, the ruby? Tube? Yes, yes. Yeah, the ruby tube. You know? Those always smoke great. You know, that's yeah. something we haven't talked Those about in a while. Great. It's it, it's weird size. And, yes. and, and I just get the tip. I, I do like a V cut. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? And, nice. and I just like it. You know, it's. A, Those it's, age actually very well. In fact, yeah, very yeah. early on in the Stogie Geeks history, Stogie Santa at Mr. J's on a smoke shop mm-hmm. had a bunch. And it's a long history with La Aurora and uh, the different price points you could find online and in shops. And they've taken some time to kind of settle out. Mm. But it, he had some that were sitting there forever. And I tell you what, that Ruby Tor, which is a Maduro in the Preferitos blend, yep. that had aged for however long, eight years or whatever, was just magical. Yeah, it's, it's That's one I'll age. Yeah, yeah, I've been on that. You know, I just, you know. I definitely like like that uh, the the uh, sober mesa, yeah. As well, you, you like know. to see. I like the yeah. micarita way better than the sober mesa. I do too, but in the morning, so you know you can go for the sober, sober mesa. mesa. I'll try. Yeah, you know, a that's a good. It's a good point. Morning, I'll try it in the in know. the morning. What is his new size? He came out with in the sober mesa though. That's the one I like. The smaller size that he came, he came out in two. He came out with the uh, the short Churchill, and he came out with the Churchill uh, Elegante and Cedros, which is a traditional seven by. Four. Fifty, and then the short Churchill is four and three quarter by, by forty-eight. 48. By 48. It's, more 48. Like yeah. it's more like a Rothschild. It's more like a Rothschild. I like the uh, short Churchill a lot, actually. I me, thought that me, had a lot me, of character to it. Yeah, I, I did too. I thought it was. I know you weren't. It wasn't your favorite size. It was my favorite size. Yeah. The, here's the thing, right? Both the Churchill and the short Churchill are amped up versions, so they've yeah. got more pop than the core blend. Um, in the core blend, though, I'm, I'm still I'm still on the El Americano. I still love the Toro. Mm. It's got that that sweet, uh, very unique cinnamon cedar note on the retrohale that I don't get in any of the other Vitolas, and uh, mm. that's just my that's just my favorite. Now, now, Stace, you have and for the folks that know, Stace actually worked for Steve during this year at the trade show, so Stace really knows Steve. You've actually smoked this third cigar that you're saying of of these two. With the yeah. one that we all need to look out for. You, yeah, you've been when, raving about this when, one. When Moistro de Saka comes out in March, um, you know, Steve sent a couple boxes out 
uh, to different stores. I don't know how widespread it went. We were fortunate enough to get a couple of the Moistro de Saco, the Exclusiva, which is a 6x52 Toro. It comes in a box, a seven-count box. Each each cigar is in its own coffin. That cigar, uh, I, I don't know, just... Steve has placed the leaves in such a perfect situation that the cigar tells a story. You know how sometimes you'll smoke a stick and, and it'll you know go for an inch and then it'll change for an inch and then it'll stay the same or sometimes it just stays the same. That exclusivo started out about is effortless and, effortless and mild, uh, very sweet, and then it just got more complex and stronger, more complex and stronger. By the time I nubbed that thing, it was knocking me out. It was very, very good. I, I, I'm i curious to see what all the other bloggers and all the other media guys say about this when it comes out. In my opinion, I only got to smoke two of them, but it's, in my opinion, the best stick Steve's come out with. It beats Mike Rita. It beats all the Sober Mesa versions, and that's the 6x52 Exclusivo and the Moisture Design. Which I still haven't smoked yet because I've been waiting for it to come out. And you say it's scheduled to come out in March, you said, for retail? Yes, scheduled okay. to come out in March. Well, yeah. Looking forward to it, definitely. Yeah, we have actually a picture of it, I think, on Cigar Coop uh, of it. So, because I did get one of those early ones that Stace talked about. I've been holding up on smoking it, but he, every time I see Stace, he's like, you smoke that thing? Yeah, I'm like, no. I just, because I want to smoke it uninterrupted, obviously, because he's been just raving about it. Tomorrow sounds like a good day, sir. I know, I'm off, yeah. Yeah, Joe is, Joe is very much in the, like, <laughs> you give Joe a cigar, he's going to smoke it. He's not about, like, waiting, which I think there's something to be said for that. Uh, uh, for that mentality, I I, 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 I agree with that approach because a lot of times I've sat on cigars, forgotten that I've had them, mm-hmm. or by the time I go back and smoke them, they're either aged out or, or like whatever. Yeah. yeah. So. If, if if somebody nope. gives me a good cigar, it's 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 smoked within forty eight hours for sure. Well, and I gave him yeah. a Davidoff Yamasa Robusto, which I'm gonna light up in like. And he's like, seconds. I'm smoking this right now on the show. This is great. <laughs> nice. And those are smoking great now too, so you can't go wrong there. Will, what else you been smoking? All right, so I finally got a, this is one of those cigars that Paul got me that I finally got around to smoking it, mm. right? So I, I sat on it, and I can see why all these went in the studio, right? Mental so, note to self, Coop holds sticks for a long time before smoking them. Yeah, but so, so we got a box of these, actually, pre-FDA from John Carney. It was the, the La Florida Minicana, the TAA. The 48. The, the 48 Celebration. That's the, the Maduro. The, that's a Maduro the, one, right? The, the, the that's the broadleaf. That's yeah. the broadleaf. Yeah. And and I remember I said, "Is this all we got?" And he like Paul's like, "Yeah, they went kind of quick." I totally get it, Paul. Yeah, people were this, smoking. I mean, people holy, were raving about this stick. Oh my goodness, is this thing? I wish this was the one they released to the TAA as the regular release. Yeah. Because this was only available at events, and and um, but it, I tell you what, it was it was unbelievable. I found it I found it a little more refined actually than the original TAA forty eight. Okay, I found that to be a little more of a grittier cigar. Mm-hmm. Than this, but the flavor was just fantastic off this thing. It's like a medium to full strength, medium to full bodied cigar. It um, I just thought it, it was a one of the better broadleaf Maduros I've had from La Florida Minicana. And they box pressed it, didn't they? Yeah, yes. they box pressed it. Yeah. yeah, they box pressed it, and it's almost that. It's not quite that factory press, press, but it's close to it. Mm. Um, if I'm telling you, there are some. If, if people are asking me, I did see Smoke In had some of these online for sale in five packs. And I tell you what, I know the other, uh, a different Lafleur got the cigar aficionado rating. For me, if I had to pick an LFD cigar that came out in 2016, this was the one. I mean, hands down. And I smoked their football release, the uh, the special one. I've smoked probably we've reviewed almost all of the LFD releases that came out in 2016. Well, this one was hands down my pick. I mean, this would be number one cigar uh, in, in place of the one that got the rating in Cigar Aficionado. I mean, in the one that got the rating is, is good cigar. Don't get me wrong. This one is just special. Mm. Special. That's- I'll, I'll tell you what, I, I, uh, I didn't do a top list this year, um, and I'm just smoking my first one now, and so it's, it's, I'm only halfway in. But I will tell you right now, this small batch number six, oh, my gosh. I just lit it up for the show. This is an amazing Paul, Yeah, I have to get you some of these. They, oh, yeah, I, the, you know, I haven't smoked the, uh, the Lito Gomez small batch number six. It, it's a cigar of the year candidate, and that's a little bit of a hint um, for me. It is, it, yeah, I think this one is even. I think this one's even better uh, than that. Than I, I, I will go out on a limb. I, I've only smoked half of one, right? But I will go grab more 
uh, tomorrow, and I'm going to smoke these. But I'm telling you what, I'm going back in my mind, small batch five, small batch four. Small batch three is probably, I, I would put this really close right to there. three. Yeah, yeah. Wow. Uh, and that's just, and that's just on half a stick. This yeah. is phenomenal. It, yeah. Wow. And those are kind of flying under the radar because everyone's going for the what was the one that got number one? The um and, and delusion bull. And delusion bull. Everyone's buying those up. Sure. But this small batch number <clears throat> number six is probably sitting on the retailer shelves, not moving. <laughs> and here, it, here Stace and Will are saying it's one of the better cigars they smoked in twenty sixteen. That tells me I need to go do some shopping tomorrow. Yeah, Paul, yeah. I can pick it up too, if you, uh, actually, because they sell it at this uh, Union Cigar where my son works, and he actually went over there earlier today to get it. Nice. Uh, yeah, they may have it, some it, next door. Next door usually, at Havana Club usually carries the LFD yeah. stuff. So I like a, yeah. a, a different LFD, the uh, Cameroon Lancero. The Cam- oh, the, oh. The, the LFD Cameroon wow. Lancero. Those are good. And, and yeah. uh, you know, uh, it, it, it's funny. You go to uh, uh, another cigar shop in Providence. And there's a ton of them sitting on the shelf. Yes. Like, nobody gets a Lancero, right? And it's, you know, it's... it's that is a fantastic smoke. Yeah, it's in, it's in that $8, 9 I smoked those it's with so tons awesome. of age. Mark, that's another yeah. cigar that Mark Jr., who used to be on the show, uh, had a ton of. Yeah. And we would smoke those like... He, he had, I don't know, he inherited... The backstory with Mark Jr. is he inherited his uh, father-in-law's humidor. Mm-hmm. His father-in-law passed away. And his mother-in-law said, I know that he would want you to have his human. So, but his father-in-law now had like thousands of sticks in his humidor. Sure. And had multiple boxes of that LFD Cameroon lens. Love it. So when he was here, he used to live around like right down the street from me. We would smoke those all the time. He's well, like, dude, yeah. I got boxes of these. Yeah, yeah. And, since <laughs> and they were fantastic. And since I'm a cigar gypsy, I usually judge what I want to smoke by which cigar I'm going to go. Which like which shop, shop you're I'm in. Go yes. Into. You, know what you I mean? find your favorites in your. Yeah, yeah no, I, like, I do oh, the same know, thing. If I feel yeah. like LFD Cameroon, I got to go to Hanley's uh, uh, yes. House Cigars because I know yeah. they'll be on the shelf. Yep. You know, it's, oh, that seems they have those at Hanley's. That's interesting. Yeah, and yeah. that's not a very big humidor in there either. It's not, yeah. but, but it's one of those things. Anything in the Lincero size, especially, mm-hmm. in a, you know, you're in the metro metro in Providence. Yes. And, and it's like, uh, why would people want a Lincero? Don't shortchange the Lancero. It's such a great smoke. Well, and I think you're right. In that in the kind of metropolitan areas metro, like that, metro, they wow. don't... Um, people just want to smoke a regular cigar. They yeah. don't want to go towards the boutique sizes. Yeah. yeah. They're just... Passing through because they're traveling or they're out with their friends. Let's stop here and they get like a robusto or something. They're not into those. Yeah, no, I can see. Yeah, that. yeah. I, can see I, that. I love the camera, the Cameroon lens there. Oh, yeah. um, awesome. So. Uh, Will and Stace and Joe, I don't know if you've had a chance to smoke this, but um, Will and I had a, an opportunity to interview um, Omar from Fratello Cigars. Really? Omar DeFres from Fratello. Uh, he's been on the show, I think, three times, is actually. That the, I've had. This the, is his Connecticut. Word. Really? And I, and I had the one with the red. I had a sp- yeah, I haven't smoked this one either. I yeah. Hear about so this. when I was uh, over Christmas break, hmm? I uh, I stopped in the studio a couple times just to like catch up on some work, one of the uh, cleanup kind of thing. And I stopped next door at Havana Club, and Havana Cigar Club, and I remember Omar saying, "Yes, we're getting ready to ship these." And I kept asking all, you know, I'm like, "You're a cigar gypsy." I'm asking all our retailers, "You know, did yeah. you get this? Did you get this in?" <laughs> and they're like, "Not yet, not yet, not yet." I walk into Havana Club, and they've got the full line. Will. Every single size yeah, of do. the Fratello Connecticut, like right there in prime realty. And I tell you what, he's got the the boxer size, which is a box press torpedo. Yep. He's got uh, smaller sizes. I smoked the Toro, um, and I was so excited to smoke it because Omar is such a nice guy. I love Omar, and that factors into when I smoke his cigars. Uh, and I was really anxious to try his Connecticut because I love Connecticut's. Um, this Toro smoked, I mean, it was a good Connecticut. I would call it a fiver. You know, it didn't. I thought it could have benefited from some age. Ungraded, they just came in, so um, I'm going to smoke more and update my rating. Uh, as I bought two of each size because I really wanted to try this line. Uh, like I said, I'm a huge fan of Connecticut. Uh, the Toro for me so far was a fiver, and there's a lot of factors that play into that. It could be that I felt this cigar needed a little more time. Even being Connecticut, don't forget, the tobacco still needs time to age. Mm-hmm. Connecticut's will age out faster than other cigars typically, but... it. it, it Connecticut scores still benefit from age. If the, the Padron de Masso wasn't a shining example of that, uh, that was the, the best example I can think of a Connecticut that benefited from age. This one benefits from age, I think, will uh, in the future, but I thought it was a fiver uh, right off the truck. Now, the other scenario that it could be is that some of these other sizes 
could smoke different and just appeal to my palate better. Some of my like most favorite cigars, and more specifically Connecticut cigars, I don't care for in certain sizes, but other sizes, like the Toro in a Connecticut from EPC is my favorite, mm-hmm. one of my favorite Connecticut's of all time. In the Robusto and the Gordo, I'm like, yeah, it's, it's a fiver, right? I mean, not that it's not a bad cigar, but I'm like, it's a fiver. So I think I'm just working to find my, my size that I like uh, in the Fratello. I think the blend is really good. Um, you know, it certainly wasn't an angler or throw it off the boat, right, kind of rating. Like, <laughs> it's a good cigar. I just we need to work to find my size and maybe let some of them age a little more. But I tell you what, uh, Will and Stace, I don't know if you've seen this cigar in the full line. The boxer size in this cigar, and the packaging on all of them, but specifically the boxer size, that box-pressed torpedo, is absolutely gorgeous. I mean, this cigar is gorgeous to look at. I've only seen them uh, online, haven't seen them in person. Uh, Looking forward to getting my hands on them, Mm. and uh, I've heard great things. And and like you, Paul, uh, when I'm smoking Connecticut Shades, I find myself gravitating towards one or two Batolas as well. I, I think it's very difficult to balance out the wrapper binder filler on smaller, shorter cigars than it is on, you know, larger ring gauge or, or, or larger cigars. So I, I find myself gravitating towards Toros as well. Yes. I'll join your quest over the next yeah. week and, and grab Yeah, try some of the fruit. Yeah. 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 Cause I like, and part of it is, you know, Omar such a great guy, but yeah, he is. And, and these wrapper, not only is the packaging gorgeous, but the wrappers, and I don't normally talk about like how nice the wrapper looks. Cause I'm like, I don't care if it's the ugliest wrapper in the world. If it's an amazing cigar, it's an amazing cigar. I don't care what it looks like, right? If it smokes great and it tastes great and it's an amazing cigar, like I don't give any points, positive or negative, to the look of the cigar itself, right? And we'll mention it here on the show. Uh, and I just have to say that this wrapper is absolutely gorgeous, right. and the construction is absolutely impeccable. Like it holds an ash, like it's it's impeccable. So I guess you um, and I might balance each other out because I'm sometimes a sucker for the marketing. Yeah, it's, <laughs> I, yeah, no, I am too. I am too. I try not to let it interfere with my rating, but I do often make a point to kind of talk about it. It's all it. about presentation. The presentation think, is know, done presentation very nicely. It's going to be good too. And the, right. the 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 tobacco leaf that he used on the wrapper is just. Gorgeous. Mm. Just has a shine to it. No, it's just gorgeous. If it looks sexy in the box, it ain't sitting on the shelf long, right? That's, that's right. You know, yeah. that's very, you're very true. Uh, you know, it's it's amazing. You know, I I, I always like to try to, uh, if if we ever get a chance to to interview people as the year progresses and whatnot, as we start interviewing people, I love to know like how they came up with the design for the label or the wrapper. You know, because it and, and and it's amazing because most of the owners it, it does tell a story. You know, it does. Oh, yeah. Know, it's, 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 it's their baby that's sitting on the shelf, you know? Yep. Yep. Ba- back to you, Will. <laughs> Excuse me. Uh, I, okay. yeah, I've, I've got one in yeah, there. You go. uh, yep. <laughs> again, holiday season, I, I'm kind of reaching to the top shelf. So uh, every year during the holidays, I always go back to the staple cigar that, that I stumbled across and, and just fell in love with. For me personally, this is the cigar that defines exactly what Nicaraguan full-bodied Maduro is supposed to be. Mm. Uh, it, it's the Padron, the family reserve, the number 45, right? It, the one that got the number one cigar, I think, 2009. Yep. Uh, th- that cigar, for me, is is just iconic. Um, I like buying them new. I like aging them. Uh, the one that I smoked this year, it was one that I bought at the shop, so it was uh, this year's vintage. It, it's every bit as good as it always has been, in my opinion. I just, And, and that's another thing that, that I think goes unnoticed, right, is that when somebody builds a cigar and it can stay consistent year after year after year, um, because the vintage of the tobaccos aren't, right? They, they change every year. So um, not a lot of cigar. I think Fuente does that very well with their core lines, uh, very consistent. I'd even say Romeo and Julieta from Altadis, you know, whether you like a Romeo or not, that cigar is consistent year after year after year. Um, for me, the Padron Family Reserve, uh, the 1964, the, the 45th anniversary Maduro, is, is it, was it for me, and, and it's still probably one of my top five cigars go to. Uh, Smoke uh, that, uh, a few of those at 26 bucks a pop. So roll it out for the holidays. I agree. I, you know, I, I like that in the Maduro. That was certainly one of the Padrones that really stood out to me. Um, I love all of their Family Reserve releases. I, I can't think of one that like I smoked and I was like, eh. 
that's not really good, right? Yeah, like, he, sure. you yeah, know yeah. what I mean? Yeah. And I yeah. like the Naturals and the Maduros. I think it, it, you know, certainly it suits my mood. Uh, some are better than others, but some also depend on my mood and what kind of smoking environment, what what I'm eating, what I'm drinking kind of thing. They just pair better. Uh, they're just different. None of them are better or worse than the other ones. It just depends on what you're in the mood for, how much time you have. And Padron has done... I think an impeccable job, one of the best jobs I think in the industry with coming up, coming out with a regular limited release, making it different every year and yep. not disappointing at like really ever. Like when have you smoked a family reserve or a Padron special release and been like, yeah, that's really not that great. Right. right. <laughs> like, I, I, Never. They're all good. Never. Come on. Yeah, yeah absolutely. I, I I agree. I agree. And, and, and it's interesting too. Uh, you could say this for the 46th, the uh, 44th, but for me, the 45th was the one that did it. It, it, you know, it. it looks elegant, but it's rough, right? It's rough around the edges. It just, it's got that, that manly, let's go out and, you know, full body, let's just bring it on. I, I love the balance of, of elegance, but roughness around the edges because they don't spend a lot of time on the caps on those, right? It's just popping up the top, but it, it seems to work for them. It's just, it's yeah. really unique. The caps do kind of suck on Padron, so that's my one complaint about Padron. <laughs> I'm right with yeah, well, you. and really, what that means, you just need a really good quality cutter, mm. right? Like if we had a, a manufacturer that made cutters that sponsored the show, this would be an opportune time to plug them. Sure, you know. <laughs> but like, you really need a good quality scissor or cutter yeah, to, to really uh, on a Padron. I. Yeah, and I know a lot of people that smoke Padron are agree. Stogie Santa was the one that told me that. And I'm like, no, you can't say anything bad about Padron. Dude. Like, they make awesome cigars. And then after I smoked a bunch more, I'm like, you know, yeah, Stogie Santa was right. Like, caps, they really, the caps, caps kind of, fall off. The, yeah, the caps especially are Especially kind of, if you're golfing. Yeah. Caps. Yeah, I, I it's I not a good not, golfing yeah, it's a experience. Gu- yeah, yeah, it's a good, you know, uh, some, I dub some cigars as golfable. Like, yes. they're good. Yeah. And they're golfable, you know, especially, you know. Yeah, Padron, not so much, right? N- n- no, Padron, uh, you know, you're sitting down. You want to relax. You know, yes, you're in a controlled don't, environment. Don't, don't right. do computer work. Just enjoy, you want to the, enjoy smoke. the cigar. You I know, agree. Don't, yeah. don't, don't check email or anything like that. Just right. just enjoy the smoke, you know? Well, you got other cigars on your list? Yeah. You know, another one I, I kind of lit up this week was uh, Nesta Miranda's new cigar, which is the Nesta Miranda um, Collection Corojo. So I don't know. Have you seen this one yet, Paul? Is it next no, door? I have not. It's got tons of them next door. Yeah, they're oh. big on Nestor Miranda next they're big door, too. We'll, we'll yeah. have to check on that. Yeah, we're still here. The yellow? Yeah, okay. Yeah, you cut out for a second. Um, this is, you know, so you know he's done those, like, Art Deco bands right now. Mm-hmm. So he's got a new one out that he released at the show. It's a Corojo, and it's a Nicaraguan Puro, and it's got, a, like, a, like, a yellow Art Deco band to it. Um, I, I actually thought, you know, this one actually, I think maybe my favorite of all the Nesta Mirandas that have been, that have come out by him. They, they were kind of telling us that Nest, this was like Nestor kind of went to them and I could see Nestor going to like, you know, Jason Wood or the factory saying, Hey, what about like Nestor wanted a Corojo wrapper. So what Nestor wants, Nestor's going to get right. Is, you know, you don't want to mm. deprive Nestor of a Corojo, but this, I tell you what, this was a great, this was a great little cigar that, that I, uh, that had in it. It had um, great natural tobacco taste to it. So I mean, if you just want something that tastes like a cigar, this is it. But it had a little bit of that Corojo sweetness that you're going to get off of it too. A little bit of a cocoa note. It's like a medium strength to medium to full bodied cigar. So it, it's kind of right in the middle there. But I actually thought this cigar, it just, the other Nesta Miranda cigars are good. This one just kind of stood out to me. Is the best way to put it. I think they did a. I think they did a good job at capturing a Nicaraguan puro with this cigar. The other ones aren't puros, but this one, you know, I could say, yeah, this cigar is like Nicaraguan. You know, it's earthy. It's it's got some spice. You know, it's it's got a little bit of pop to it. I liked it. I I, I gave. I actually gave this one a box split. And this was in the uh, robusto size. Nice, nice. Um, has anyone smoked the new La Verite? That came out this year. It was a 2016 release, but it's the 2013 vintage La Verite from Tatawahe. Mm, came no. out in a Robusto and a Churchill. I haven't, but yeah, these are the, these are the That's ones. That's the 2013, right? right. Correct. It just came out this year. Yep. I haven't smoked them yet. They're on my uh, seek and find list. So it, it's interesting. I smoked uh, both the Robusto and the Churchill. Right, and they're I, different blends. They're different blends. Are they? Are they? okay. So that makes a lot of yeah. sense about what I'm just yeah. about to say. Yeah. And then, yeah. so I I smoked two of each, and I was like, wow, 
like I really have a strong opinion about each one. <laughs> yeah. And I well I went to uh, Mr. J's and I uh, talked to my friend Dave, and I'm like, "Did you smoke that?" And he's like, yeah. And he said, like, my exact opinion, like, verbatim. I'm like, all right, I'm not crazy. Like, I thought it was just me. So the Robusto was just very bland and uninteresting. And I was like, this, I'm like, what is going on? Like, this is a not typical Pete, like, not typical Tatawahe. La Verte releases have been, I mean, some are better than others, obviously. But I'm like, for the most part, they're really good. And the whole thing with this La Verite series, right, was it was like wine, like it was a specific vintage tobacco from a certain time, and that gets released. Like he was trying to mirror what the wine industry does. For those yep. that don't know, Pete uh, Johnson is a huge fan of the you know wines and stuff like that, um, which I'm not a wine person, but uh, I understand the... We're gonna balance each other out. Well, the, well, that's good. That's, <laughs> like, we need that. No, we need that because I am not a wine person at all. I could talk a lot about scotch and bourbon and yeah. even beer more so than wine. Mm-hmm. Um, but I get the philosophy behind. You got a vintage of a grape, and that produces a vintage of wine, and it's aged for so long, and that's that year. And we we do some of that in the cigar industry. But Pete really took it to the next level with La Verite and said, no, I want to very closely mirror that process. And I understood that. So when I smoked this Robusta, I was like, wow, like that's not good at all. Like that's a try one at best. And that, and, and that was the Robusto? And that was the Robusto. What about the other one? So then I smoked the Churchill, and I was like, I really, I really hope that this is different. <laughs> and I smoked the Churchill. And I was like, "Holy crap, this thing's awesome!" Really? <laughs> oh, I mean, you could smoke. The, the thing I liked about the Churchill was there isn't a whole ton of strength, but there's enough strength that you could smoke it first thing in the morning, in the afternoon, or at night, and still get a great experience. It ha- kind of had that Cuban esque quality. I like that about Cuban cigars. Is that they're uh, strength-wise, you can smoke them in the morning, but flavor-wise, you could smoke them any time of day. Right. And to me, that's a very uh, positive quality in a cigar. And I got that with this La Verite 2013 in the Churchill size. I'm like, wow, that's that's pretty awesome. Like, I would buy a box of those. And they are there are limited because he's doing the wine thing, right? And I, I really, I, the Churchill I would call box worthy, and the the Robusto I would say try one. Like, and to have such a diverse rating between the two different sizes, it makes sense what you say, Will, that they're different blends. Yeah. So what Pete's done in the past, and he's been a little tight lipped on this blend, but typically it's the filler that's been different, and it's typically different proportions of tobacco that have been in the filler. Mm-hmm. So I remember with the 2009s, there was more Pelo de Oro in the um, in the filler in the yep. filler with the Churchill. Yeah. And he did too. The oh wait, right? Oh wait, no nine. No wait, no nine. Back to back. And I remember and 11, I, twelve. They came out right. Yeah, I remember Stogie Sand and I had a discussion on the oh wait, and and, and 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 he just did not like that Robusto either. In the oh, 08. I love the oh wait Robusto. Yeah, I didn't like it either. But but they are they they you know and even most we've always talked about on the show how every every blend every size the size matters every size is different right. but I think with this and I haven't smoked the 13s yet but with the eights and the nines there was a big difference and that's because Pete did do some things with with the with the proportions and I assume leaf placement as well as playing it yeah, yeah absolutely yeah, yeah. Paul, Paul how did the 13s compare to the eights or the nines yeah. on the Churchill I thought the Churchill was right up like with any other um, La, La Verite uh, release that I've had like that 2013 yep. Churchill was right up there and I think similar to wine like age plays a factor and I know Stogie San has been kind of like the the curator of these La Verites like he's kind of guided me like you should smoke this one at this time and for the most part he, he's spot on and you know the eights and nines have had some differences in terms of sizes when they were released and then in terms of how much age they have on them so I think Pete's done a very innovative thing in our industry um, but this Churchill in the 2013 Equally as good as any other La Verite that I've smoked under Stogie Santa's guidance, you know, over time, like this is smoking great now kind of thing. I think that they're all pretty great. And I, I would definitely buy a box of 2013 uh, Churchill's. I think it's a, it's that ver- because of the versatility. This is a cigar I can smoke any time of the day, which is awesome. You know, that hasn't come, you know, you got these at Mr. J's? I did, yes. Because this didn't come up in my weekly briefing with Stogie Santa. That's and interesting. I did have a week, yeah, so I got to find out why this didn't come up in the week. I wonder he, if he didn't like. I wonder if he didn't like either one. <coughs> that's what, well. No, he would if he didn't like either one. That it, that would have been part of the weekly briefing. That's I'd be surprised if he had, starts off. Well, you know, he's yeah. he's he's had uh, you know issues and uh, shoulder surgery yeah. or something like that. Yeah. So yeah, he's been no, kind of out of the mix. 
usually it's one of two things. Don't buy this, or I've just mailed you these because they're that good. Right. So so he may not have gotten to them yet, is my guess. Yes. What else you guys been smoking? Well, uh, I got one if you're not. Go ahead, Will. Picked up. Uh, oh, go ahead, Stace. Well, just the other night, right, uh, during the bowl games. Yeah, I was uh, through the bowl games. I think I may have talked about the cigar on a show back in November, Paul. Um, it, it's it's one that I, I I bounce back to. I don't smoke it that often because they're just so hard for me to get. Um, I, they're a regular production, but he has limited. And it's the terroir that Brian Brian uh, Chinook does out of Chinook Cellars. Yeah, it's the uh, the six by fifty two Toro that's done, done out of El Teton de Bronze. Willie Herrera had done the, the blend. He's got an Ecuadorian uh, De Florado wrapper on it with a mixture of binder and fillers from Nick and, and Dominican. I just like it because it's smooth, it's creamy, it's elegant. Um, I smoked that, uh, watched a couple bowl games earlier in the morning and, uh, just really, really liked it. I liked it so much. I went and grabbed another, I ended up smoking too. So I've only got like three or four left. Um, but it's, it was a really nice stick. And if you guys haven't hit that, I know that it's not a popular name. He's Uber boutique, but Chinook sellers, uh, he's got a number of, of lines of cigars out there, but look for the terroir. It's got that special metal etched band. Uh, it's very stunning to look at. It's about twelve dollar price point MSRP. It's a really rock solid. Not to uh, mention, Joe, I don't know if you're familiar with Chinook Cellar Cigars, but mm. Brian Chinook, first and foremost, super nice guy. Uh, secondly, he did a charity thing for his wife who passed away. He came on the show and talked about that. I, I mean, and it just speaks to his character and him as a person. The other thing about Brian is huge wine guy. Dude, he's got his own wine cellar. Like when he comes on the show, like he literally has his wine. He's in a cave. He's in a a cave, like in his wine cellar. He's drinking from like the most gigantic wine glass I've ever seen. Like he's totally into wine. He does some fantastic cigars. So that's that's a great choice, Dave. He's he's done he's done wine for thirty over thirty years. So Mm -hmm. he's he's a he's a vinter first. And came into the cigar industry about eight, seven, eight years ago. Yeah, and you know I got to give Stace the credit here because he introduced me to Brian about mm. five years ago. Uh, you know I wouldn't have really known of him otherwise. He found him at the show. Uh, Brian's. I did get Brian's. I have that cigar, Paul. I yes. haven't smoked. I, I just procured the TLP, so uh, I do know a place that has them. So, oh, good. So yeah, and uh, I'm looking and forward. And to- I saw a Facebook post from Brian that he uh, like exceeded his goals of uh, charity that he was raising. Yep. Uh, for his wa- uh, did he set something up for his wife? I forget the, exactly what he did. I think he set up a charity for his wife and he exceeded his goal. So, it was for yeah. diabetes, uh, I guess, raised 50, money for – Yeah, K, right? Something like that. Yeah. It was, it was a great event. Yeah. yeah and, and I can tell you that Brian's a very popular guy in the cigar industry. You know, when his wife did pass away, I mean, everyone – uh, you know, was there for him in the Fuentes. I know he's very tight with the Fuentes. And, and uh, yeah, uh, I do want to get out to that. California. I am going we've to always, California. We've always this talked year, about going there and doing that. a show. Oh, like from yeah. his wine. And he has a big long table. He's like, we do these big cigar. Di- like, it just sounds I'm at, I'm I, at, I, I'm I, am, I am going to California soon, so I may have to shoot up there. But yeah. I am going to be in the California, so yeah. Stogie Geeks live from California in the dungeon. That's I'm right. Gonna, yeah. <laughs> that sounds like a good time. I'm in a yeah. vineyard at least every other week. What people don't know is there. There are some really cool vineyards here in the, Rhode Island. So uh, Rhode Island, is and then in, if you take a ferry, you can get to Long Island, yes, and, and there's tons of yeah. Long Island. There's it's, a lot of great amazing, vineyards, and, and it's 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 another journey. You know, if you're a cigar smoker, and and if you keep a journal, or if you like different smokes and whatnot, uh, you can get that fanatical wine. There's so much local stuff here. There is. I've been to a place. We're uh, gonna have to do a broadcast I've been to a from place a, in a vineyard. It's yep. out of a guy's house, and he has a barn, mm-hmm. and he just produces. And I'm making it up. Might be like twenty, twenty-five thousand a year. That's it. It's like fifty dollars a bottle. But the stuff is so good. Yeah. You know what I mean? It's and, very, it is very and, similar and, and, to you know, cigars. It, 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 yeah. It's very yeah. similar. The stories are similar. Mm-hmm. I, I, I love it. You know? We're going to have to go to a broadcasting live from a vineyard. You know why he drinks out of a big wine glass? Yeah. Because you know, when you pour the wine, it's supposed to stop where the wine glass starts to bow. Mm-hmm. Right? And the wider the mouth, the more... Uh, Oxygen that can get into it, and if you let it breathe, oh, like like you know, it was New Year's Eve when we were out. You know, I I, I poured just like a half of a, a thing. I said, just wait like ten minutes, and then let it breathe. It, yeah, yeah, there's yeah. like a whole science. Yeah, behind it, it, it. It, it, it's it's crazy, and then and then you pour it, and and the people out were like, oh wow, 
Because, you know, they wanted to pour it and fill it up, and it's New yeah, Year's Yeah, fill it my way. I'm like, no, 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 no. To Just trust me. <laughs> like, just trust me on this one. There's right? a process here. I'm yeah. driving this bus, okay? <laughs> if, we, if we can't smoke cigars, we're going to enjoy wine. So, yes. <laughs> that being said, that being said, since we're in a restaurant and we can't smoke cigars, right. we're going to enjoy this wine, and, and, wine. And, and it's amazing. It's good stuff. Right. Hey, Joe, if, if we can't swirl our glasses, man, there's way too much wine in the glass. That's, That's right. right. That's exactly. It's got to breathe. Good point. Yeah, good point. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's a good time, you know. I, I love wine as much as I like cigars. You know, it's good. To... I, I do appreciate wine. I'm yeah. not a huge wine drinker, but yeah. I, I do. I would... But, but this right New England area has so, so many amazing stories, so many things you can do. We should, we should do some stuff. And whiskey, too. Someone just – um, Uprising. Uh, Uprising. I've been someone to gifted this. me a bottle of yeah. – up, This yeah. limited small batch of Uprising. Yep. Let me tell you, it's kind of like a, a blending of whiskey, bourbon, and cognac, like all in one yep. thing. They have this little limited edition. Yep. My friend gave it to me for Christmas. I was like, wow, that's – it's a lot. Like I, I only drink. I think I drink it differently. Like a very small amount. Like drink it really slow. Mm-hmm. It's very full body. It should be your last drink of the night. Yep. But I'm like, this comes from Rhode Island. I'm like, it this comes is- from Rhode Island, and and the place has got to be at least maybe 900 square feet. I've been there. I've been there for a tour. And they're great people. I've they, met them before. They've they actually been, sponsors yeah. of my show. Oh, so they did? Okay, good. Yeah, yeah. And, 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 and they also have one that it, 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 it's, I guess, if the same process that you make like an IPA, it mm-hmm. gets weighted in a barrel and it becomes a, a whiskey. It's, it's, yeah. so, it's so crazy. And it's, they do vodka too, right? Yep. Yeah. It, 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 it's all right here in Rhode Island. You know, there's tons of places uh, That's good. that you can do that. You know, it's good stuff. That's the mission for 2017 is to go expand to some that. fabulous places. And it, it's expand. amazing because because the sto- because the talk track and the story is all the same. Yes, you know? bunch of people sitting around. They they created the blend, and they were like, well, you know, no pun intended, but you know, this blend, blend has legs. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? And and then it's it's they they just turn around and say, you know, uh, wonder if we could sell it. And so they start doing tastings. And in Rhode Island, even in the craft beer industry, in 2012, there were. Um, only three breweries that had it, and now we have over 15. Wow. So they, we have a Rhode Island brewer's trail. Yeah. Just like a Connecticut wine trail. It's 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 a fascinating market. It's cool to see it grow. Yeah. All right. Um, well, are we good on Stogies of the Week? Yep, we okay. are. All right. We're going to take week. a short break. We're going to come back and talk about a meeting with President Trump as it relates to cigars. So stay tuned. Stay tuned. 